here's a nice little feature on the Columbus State's homepage. And, you know, the thing is, we want to kind of figure out, how do you lay it out? How do they create this? Now, there's other tutorials that we would have to do to get the hover effect and, you know, uh, going in and creating some other effects for this to work perfectly for a mobile device versus a desktop version. But what I want to know is, how do we go in and we get this to be these graphics side by side without the hover effect right now? And one of the things is that as you learn and work with layouts, one of the best ones to, you know, to go and adjust with CSS is the display method. And this happens to be really set up nicely in a grid format. And so what we have to do is we have to decide, well, how many columns, how many rows are we working with in that sense? In theory, we're really only working with three columns. You can see that. You know, we got three images going across, but really how many rows? And if we take a look here, if I'm counting this up, you know, this image itself is one. This, this is made up of two. So we got one, two, three, four, five, about five rows of information there. And you have to decide, you know, as we take a look at this, this image is going to span across two rows. This image is going to span across one row. And so what we have to determine is which images or containers we want to have span across two rows versus one. And the thing about this as well, for this to work out perfectly, the one thing you have to understand is all these images are set up with the same width and proportional with the height. For example, this height of this image that's up here at the top is 190 pixels. The width on each of these images are 340. If we took a look at the height of this double row, it's going to be just twice as, uh, as much as 190. So everything is consistent. So you have to make sure that the images are consistent. That's why we use Photoshop. That's why we use an editing program to do so. Okay. Then one of the things is, is, is if you're doing this from scratch, invest in grid paper so you can sketch. Because what's going to happen is there's grid patterns that you can actually, paper that you can buy. But you got to determine how many rows, how many columns you're going to go and have for each of these little sections. And each of these sections are just simply, I'm going to just basically incorporate the image inside a div container. So each of these divs you have to determine. And if you write out and you sketch it out on a grid paper, it makes it a lot easier to make more sense and say, hey, okay, I need to have this go across two columns or I need to have this go down two rows. And so that's definitely something that's very helpful. Now, in this case, we can see that we really have three columns going across, and we have about five rows of information to kind of work with. And so I'm going to go in, and we're going to be using the display grid to kind of create this look. And so what we're going to do is once we go in and work with display grid, we're going to have to tell it how many rows we want or how many columns we want, and really control with the rows as well. And so we're going to do a variety of couple of different things to do that. And I want you to think when you start this off, you want to start planning. For example, since these are all consistent, you're going to apply the same class to the one images that happen to be spanning across two columns. Okay, so then that means they're going to be given the same class name. Class name, so you can apply the same style to that div container. So one of the things I really want to do first is I'm going to go over here in my template that I have. I'm just going to go ahead and, and save this with a different name. And I have to have some type of container. Okay. So in anywhere in your body, what we're going to have is we're going to put in the div tag and we're going to go in and give it a class name. You can also use IDs, you know, it just really depends on what you're trying to do. And we're going to name this masonry. Now, one of the things I want to give you a, a clue on is that when you work with this and you're looking for tutorials, uh, look for masonry 
and uh, look for a, I'm probably saying that wrong <laughs> thinking about it um, but what you want to do is look for that uh, on Google because that's the term that allows you to create mosaic looks for like with images and that okay now with that once we have our container we have to put our content in now our content what we're going to do is we know it's going to be an image but we're going to go in and put it inside a div tag in theory you can put it inside a figure tag if you want but most examples will, will do a div tag so in this case we have to have our images and I have my images in my images folder okay and they're all different types art one art two art three you know and so forth and you also have to plan how you want an order that's the other aspect if you have your images in a certain number that doesn't mean it's going to be in the same order so you got to plan that out as you're working with that and so you also have to kind of plan out the names of the classes and that so the first container we're just going to have a div tag here and I'm just going to go in and give it a name class equals and this in this case I'm going to give it two class names because that way if I want to apply a style independent and then I also want this to span across two columns or two rows so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this a name column I uh, hash hash two X so that kind of gives me an idea that I'm going to cross two rows there now as we do this we have two classes here that we're going to basically be applying styles to okay and I'm going to put the first image because I want the first image to go across two rows and in this we're just going to put the IMG tag in so it's going to look like just like that and what you're going to have to do is if you have basically nine images you're going to have to have nine containers so let's say for example if I go back to the website this image here is not spanning across multiple rows so we want it just to be one column you know what span I'm sorry span across one row so here I'm just going to give it and just keep it the name col for the basic formatting if we do any and then here we're going to put the image tag in and that's that if we look at it be the art 2 and so if I really save this and I refresh my page you're not going to see anything at this point but let me just uh, open it up because all we're going to see is the images and again what you can tell here is they're the same width you can tell that they're the same width um, so we're going to go in and what we're going to add is the other images and I'm just going to go ahead I already have it done so I'm going to copy and paste it over the containers Now, as we take a look here, I have went in and decided that the third one's going to span across two columns. The fourth image is going to cross, span across two. The fifth image here is only going to do one. Okay, I have one here that I'm going to go and span across three, and then I have one here going back to two, one, and one. Okay, so the key here is to plan it out the way you want and get this one image tag down here and now it's starting to apply styling because so let's take a look at what it looks like at this point it's just going to be on top of each other as you can see here except for this last one it's a little large but that's okay because we'll fit it in perfectly when we get to it now I'm going to put the styling, usually we put in an external style sheet. I'm going to put it up here as an inline style or internal style. So that way we can see what's going on. And then we're going to make some changes with this. So the first thing you have to do is anytime you're working with a grid, you have to go to the parent container and turn on the grid feature. 
So the parent container is masonry. So what we're going to do is we're going to type in dot masonry. And then in this case, we'll do display grid. And that's it for right now. Let's just see if anything changes. Nothing's happening yet. Why? You ask yourself. Well, we haven't determined how many columns we're going to work and how many rows we're going to use. That's another feature that you got to work on. So what we have to do is determine how many rows and how many columns we're going to be using. So in this case, I'm going to go in and I'm going to repeat and fill in the number of columns so it fits our whole page. So to do that, I'm just going to go to the next line and I'm going to type in grid hyphen template hyphen columns. Okay, and then I, you'll see here that it says repeat, autofill, and, and so forth. And because I want to kind of get a little more responsive, I'm using the autofill feature. And I'm basically, when we look at the FR, FR, just remember, FR indicates that uh, it's a fraction. So one fraction of the available width that we're working with when we work with grids. So we're incorporating the min max here. And you know, the, you know, as we start thinking about this, this is almost a standard styling that we can utilize. Um, if we wanted to, I could actually physically, if I wanted 16 columns, then I could go in and just say, repeat 16 and one fraction of each available width that's on the available space. So I could create 16 columns there if I wanted to. I'm going to have to autofill it. And using, again, autofill allows us to go in and create uh, basically a wrapping feature for your grid. So that way it wraps around and fills in the available space. Now I'm going to set the row, the row height, and I'm going to do grid hyphen uh, auto hyphen rows. Because the size of my smallest image, the height is 190, that's going to be the height of my rows. So what you have to figure out is what is the smallest element on your space that you're using in the grid. So make sure you look at the width and height, and that's going to help determine this. So what we're going to do is we're going to put in grid hyphen auto hyphen rows, and we're going to do 190px. Now if I refresh my page, you can see it automatically is fitting into a grid format. Okay. That's not the size. This is not seeing the whole entire image. It's not seeing the entire 60% and so forth. So we got more to do here. And what I want to do is let's go ahead and apply the styling. And then we'll go back in and we'll adjust the images here. So it affects and go across two columns or two rows and, and so forth. So again, that's simple. Uh, that's just going up here saying dot col and then we've got two hyphens two x and really what this is uh, all you have to do is you're going to say grid hyphen row end and what you're doing you're doing here is you're indicating when you want that row across multiple rows to end and we're just going to say span two. And since I want the other one to be three, I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste this down. And I'm going to change this to 3x. And I'm going to change the span to be three. Okay, I'm going to refresh my page here. Let's just take a look at this. Now, as you can see here, and again, it's not, it's just not laying out perfectly the way we want, but that's okay. You know, notice that this is going, this, this image here is going down two rows. 60% is going down two rows. This is going down two rows. This is only going down one. And so it's doing that. Now we can spend more time 
on stylizing. That's the important aspect of that. So once we get it in, now we can focus in. Like for example, I think up here with grids, we really should have some type of gap in between. And so I, you know, one of the common features in grids is, is use a grid gap. It's kind of like cell padding, cell spacing between tables. And let's just do 10px. Okay, and let's take a look here. Let's refresh here. Now I'm going to get a little extra space. You see how there's extra space that's even. So it's looking a little bit better. But what I want to do here, as you can see here, as I wrap around and resize my window, the images are going to wrap based on what you have there. So we're going to make some adjustments here and still make some, you know, clean it up a little bit. So what I really want to do is I want to, especially like this image down here I included, which is really large, I, it's not fitting within that container. So what can I do to resize it now? Well, we need to apply a style to the IMG tag. So I'm going to go ahead and put it right up here. I'm going to say dot IMG. So I'm going to control the actual image itself. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make it into a block because all images are, are inline elements. And once we do that, I can control the width. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a width 100%, height 100%, and that's going to be of the container that we're working with. I'm also going to put in my object fit cover and that's used the object fit is used when you're specifying how you want an image or a video element to be resized in its container so basically we're, we're basically saying hey object fit and it, when we say cover it will cut off the sides of the image preserving the aspect ratio so if it's not the exact proportion, it'll cut off the edges, kind of crop it, but it'll keep it, the, the aspect ratio definitely will keep in track. Okay, now I take a look here. Notice that image now fits nicely down here because it's fitting within the container and that's the columns, uh, the rows that's spanning across and so forth. Notice over here we have going across three rows, this image over here on the right hand side uh, this one on the left is two. So again, look how that's working. Now as I resize here, you can see that it will kind of wrap. And why does it wrap? It's because we turn on the columns, we turn on that repeat feature in autofill, the autofill, and it allows us to do that. But one of the things is, as we take a look at this and compare it to the home page, notice that this is kind of has a standard width. Well, if that's the case, you know, by default, what we're doing is we're, we're making this fit the entire container. And since I don't, I didn't choose a width, I automatically, it's going to fit from the left edge of the browser to the right edge. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put in some max width here. And I'm just going to say 1068px. I have to know the size, of the width, size of the images and so forth. And I'm doing max width because it means that if it's less than that, it will still wrap around. If you just do width, then you have a fixed size, and when you resize it, it will not wrap. So you have to do a max width here. Now when I refresh my page, okay, you can see that there's empty space over here. Now I, I've, you know, let me just zoom out a little bit. As you can see, now we can center it because it's a container, we can center it on our page, but we have to put in the max width. Now watch what happens when I resize this. If I get smaller than that, then it will resize. Okay. And to get it centered in our on our page like this, uh, if you know, depending on how our layout is, again, you have to I'm putting in a blank page, but if I had other containers and that I would have to look and see how that's working. But I can simply just go into the masonry and just say margin zero auto to center that block element. It just basically if there's any space on the right hand side it's going to distribute it 
equally on the left and right. So again, knowing how many rows you're going to span, that's the key. And hopefully this kind of makes sense, but look, look what we just did here. You know, we created something, and is it similar? Similar, it's not exact. Okay, it's not exact. Uh, now, once we get it the way we want with the grid, then we can work about the design. And if we wanted to go in and apply the hover effects and this nice little you know borders that they have here, then we can do that. But we have to work on the grid side first and get that layout the way we want.